support for that because the IRB people think we're just crazy. Um, the best support I've always got dealing with ethics committees is from patient groups because the ethics committees have got nothing to say to you. They can only say that to me. They can't say you're crazy. <laughs> well, they can, but they, they wouldn't. <laughs> Next one. So this is two stop two. Um, this is two trials um, done with the uh, done with and We did the we uh, uh, designed the one on the left. It was uh, three um, treatments: placebo, two doses of the Zolmetrip, and nasal spray, five uh, ten milligrams. And then Alan Rappaport, our uh, U.S. colleagues, um, ran a trial in the U.S. And you see the results are more or less uh, comparable. Why would you do two identical trials? Because there's a, there's a mantra at the, um, the regulatory authorities, particularly the FDA and to some extent the European medicines people, that you need two studies, well powered, with the same result, to actually license something. So you can imagine, um, so you can imagine why, um, why we put the effort into doing this, um, because two well powered, properly designed, studies with a clear result make it challenging for regulatory authorities to turn down uh, an application like this. Although they don't like crossovers, they'll live with it because clusters, they, cluster headaches relatively rare by their standards. Um, and they, they'll have all sorts of little, they'll have things to say around the edges. I suspect that this might drive uh, registration or the licensing of, of this indication. It's small B, I understand that. It's not going to run around and kill people. It's not going to make a difference to every person in the, in, 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 in the world on the subject. What I'm talking about is building blocks, incrementally moving forward. I'm talking about creating a repository of information that's bomb-proof in terms of its scientific validity. So, it, so you slowly paint these people who stop you getting medicines into a corner so that they, you know, they say, oh, we want a study. And then they say, we want two studies. Well, after that, they can't want anything else. <laughs> They just, you eventually get them in such a small corner that they'll have to give up. Um, so think of it that way. Think of building, we're building little bits with our Mars business here. So when we land, we don't land at 120 miles an hour and crash. Next slide. Um, and oxygen, next one. I was challenged by um, the, uh, really by um, the cluster headache people practice about why uh, oxygen was so difficult to get in the UK and the usual thing that came back was the was there is no evidence blah 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 okay up till just what I'm about to tell you the only evidence in the literature for the use of cluster head uh, oxygen cluster headache is this study which only has um, 19 people <laughs> uh, and only 11 completed the crossover this air versus oxygen you see the results quite distinct, but you know, 11 people completing the study, that doesn't wash, no one, that, that's it. That's the full randomized controlled trial literature on oxygen, oof. Um, and that's been quite a, a difficult problem. So we, we undertook uh, several years ago, five years ago actually, to do, uh, the, to do a, a properly powered randomized placebo controlled trial um, of oxygen. You wouldn't believe the kind of trouble um, that we had. In that. The biggest problem was from the ethics committee. Firstly, it was about the placebos. It's unethical, blah, 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 blah. Um, but they were impressed by the UK patients group who wrote to them and said, well, we want to do this. Okay. Understand what's going on. The next one was someone on the ethics committee who seriously suggested that uh, because so many people plus the headache smoke that they blow themselves up uh, during the study. <laughs> it's going to stay up for about three months while we had discussion with this town. I've never heard of someone with cluster headache blowing themselves up. Have many of you blown yourselves up? Uh, well, recently, then you might want to, exactly. Well, that's why I said to the committee, they want to blow themselves up, can't you understand it? But they don't blow themselves up. No one's ever blown themselves up. Apparently the major injury in the UK in recent times is a person with uh, airways disease, a smoker, non cluster headache patient on low flow oxygen who was swapping between the mask and the cigarette uh, at the same sort of time and managed to burn his face. You know. 
At any rate, eventually the ethics committee accepted that you wouldn't blow yourselves up. I can't believe it's <laughs> um, So there we are. Uh, and, and we went ahead with this study. Next slide. And this is what we did. Uh, everyone got a screening and randomization. It's a, that's a bit, uh, that's, a, that's a problem in itself because if you're going to screen people for a clinical trial, you can't do it on the web. Um, you've got to do it in person. And that means in a country like this, it would be multi center study. But you know, that happens. People do that in every indication um, all, all around the country, all the time, these sorts of studies. There's no reason why you guys should have some lesser, you know, rubbish standard. So we went, we went, we did that. Patients uh, were delivered the cylinders at home. BOC is now, um, Lindy got on board and gave us the cylinders. We were pleased to say, well, uh, after we, happily after we designed the study, um, they gave us the cylinders and, and delivered them. And air and oxygen is quite easy to blind, so this has been, uh, it's been very good in terms of robustness <coughs> and difficult to challenge uh, that. We decided to do uh, four attacks because we didn't want to have to go back and do it again. So there were two actives and two uh, placebo attacks, as you can imagine, each paired. So for purposes of the randomization, so that makes the design better. Takes advantage of the fact that there's less, that there's not, uh, well, we don't know how many people cost to have, I'll come to that in a second, but it's not as common that it would easily enable us to do single attacks. It seems better once we're delivering cylinders to do uh, multiple attacks, so we've got four attacks. Um, and then people uh, returned the diary, and when they didn't return the diary, mercilessly chased them on the phone um, to get the results. Um, collected the diary, and uh, next slide. And on the right is the result, um, which is sort of clearly, uh, it's clearly effective. Not for everyone, nothing works for everyone, you know. I don't think, I don't think that looking for a magic bullet until we understand disease better is smart, but looking for something that, looking for advances that will make, you know, every time you make one person's day better, you're making a contribution because there, there'll be many ones that are associated with it. Um, we got 76 patients, uh, you know, a stunning, for a crossover study, they say the major weakness of a crossover study is you don't complete the study. 96% of cluster patients complete the study. It's a real triumph, it's a real statement about, not, not us, but about cluster how motivated they are. It just, a minute one of these uh, medicines people was speaking to me and they said, oh, you know, it'll fail because of people won't complete the study. And they, they almost think, I think, that we made it up because they just can't believe that patients with your problem are that well motivated that 96% of you complete the study. So it's, that just sits them back on their backside to start with. Uh, we've got 298 attacks altogether, 76 patients, and uh, you can see the results. Um, just completely, uh, as they say in my business, completely bomb proof. Uh, whether authorities, it'd be interesting to see whether the European medicines people want another study. Um, it's interesting. Sometimes uh, authorities will take a single study in a relatively rare condition if it's done properly. Sometimes they'll want to. They might, the FDA, for example, might want to, I, I don't know, I don't know, it'd be an interesting discussion to have with them to lay the data out and see what they have to say. Um, it's not their favorite design, but then it's, but then most of the stuff, by the patients finishing the crossover, it really gets rid of most of the criticisms of, that, um, that statisticians have of these studies. So, you know, and the reason it's, the great thing about that is that, um, People with cluster finish the study because it's important to people with, uh, with cluster. So it focuses the minds of these regulators, which will see what um, which will see what happens. Because we definitely desperately need uh, government approval of these things so you can beat the uh, insurance people with that. Next time. 